Hello. Hey, Mr. Slat. So uh, I won't take too much of your time. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us at CNET. And uh, I just want to ask, can you just tell us about the Interceptor and just tell us a little bit about the background and how it works, please? Sure, yeah. So at the Ocean Cleanup, our mission is to rid the world's oceans of plastic. And for that, we, we need to do two things. Uh, on one hand, we need to clean up the legacy pollution, the, the plastic that's already in the ocean and doesn't go away by itself. But we also need to prevent more plastic from reaching the oceans in the first place. And what we found is that rivers are the main source of plastic uh, to the oceans and that 1,000 rivers are responsible for roughly 80% of the pollution. So 1% of rivers does 80% of the pollution. So um, uh, unfortunately, though, there isn't one solution that you can just bring anywhere in the world, install within days, and that, that just works. Um, so that's why we developed the Interceptor, which is the world's first scalable uh, solution uh, to intercept plastic in rivers. So, so by scalable, you mean you can you can adjust the size of it to fit in different size rivers? Is that is that what you mean by scalable? So by scalable, what I mean is that it can be applied to virtually any river in the world. So um, already some things exist um, that are really made for very specific locations, uh, but the thing is, of course, that this is a global problem. So, um, so what we um, have developed is something that can really work in all of these, or almost all of these 1,000 rivers um, that, that need to be solved. So how does it actually catch the plastic? There's, there's an arm that, that is going across the river? How, how does that work? Yeah, so, so, it first, so when the plastic flows through a river, the first thing it will encounter is, is a barrier uh, that guides the plastic to the mouth of the interceptor, where then you have a, a conveyor belt that scoops it out of the water and then uh, distributes the plastic across um, six you know, giant dumpsters uh, that act like a buffer for the plastic. So that um, uh, following that periodically, you can, uh, you, know, you can empty it, bring it to the side of the river, and take the plastic to a recycling center. And it can do, can do this fully autonomously uh, while uh, being powered day and night by pure sunlight, uh, thanks to its solar panels and, uh, and batteries. So at the end of the day, will someone like a, a person have to come and empty the the uh, bin every day? Yeah. So the um, the interceptor collects plastic fully autonomously. Uh, the only thing you have to do is empty it once in a while. Um, so you know, of course, it depends for location how often that is, but generally it would be you know, once every few days. Um, and then you indeed take the barge out like a cartridge, bring it to the side of the river and empty them out and, and bring it to recycling. So it's really, uh, the, the goal was to make it as, as easy as emptying your vacuum cleaner. It's, it's just a bit bigger. So you guys already have two installed around the world. So have they? Have you seen um, any success from the two that have been installed, I believe in Jakarta and Malaysia? Correct. Yeah, no, they, so they perform really, uh, really well. Um, and um, yeah, so in the Malaysia, that used to be one of the heaviest polluting rivers in the world. Um, and the interceptor is, um, yeah, is, is really uh, performing very well, taking tons of garbage out um, you know, on, on a daily basis. Um, of course, um, you know, the, the, the next step is to deploy the other two that we already built. So uh, those ones are going to Vietnam and the Dominican Republic. And then uh, next year we'll be starting with the scale up because uh, the goal is to, to solve those 1,000 rivers in, um, in five years' time. Fantastic. So I was there. I saw the system 001, Wilson. I saw it in person in Alameda. I actually live in Alameda. Okay. And I, I covered you guys for cool. CNET um, last year when you were right before you deployed it. So it went yeah. out to the Great Pacific Garbage Patch and you ran into some, some, some uh, issues with the design. So can you tell us right. about the upgrades and the design for system 001 slash B and how it's working mm -hmm. now? Now it's catching plastic, right? Yeah, great. So, um, so, so with the so there was really two main issues that we had with um, with the first iteration of our ocean cleanup system, where um, first of all we had, a, we had a structural failure, um, and secondly there wasn't any consistent speed difference between the plastic and, and the system, which meant that the system wasn't catching any plastic. Um, so uh, what we did was we, uh, you know, we took the system back to land, back to the drawing board, made adjustments to the, to the design, 
and uh, were able to, to resolve the root cause of the structural uh, failure, as well as uh, we were able to find a way to actually get a consistent speed difference between the system and the plastic. And uh, the way we achieved that is by turning the system around and attaching a, kind of this giant parachute, underwater parachute to it, which uh, acts like an anchor to slow down the system. And uh, what we now see is that the system continuously moves through the water slower than the plastic uh, and, and is now actually, as we speak, uh, catching plastic in, in the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Today, I am very happy to share with you that we are now catching plastic. That's fantastic news, man. I was really rooting for you guys and I'm, I'm really happy that it's working finally. So you're, you're, I'm sure you're still like perfecting it. Are there any plans for system 002 in the future? Or what are you guys, what are you guys working on now with that? Yeah, um, so right now we're rounding off the, 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 the system one campaign. Um, and um, yeah, sort of, I think next month we'll uh, really start up the system uh, number two campaign, uh, where the goal is to develop uh, sort of kind of a bigger version of this machine that is really optimized for scale um, and um, in preparation for launching a full fleet of cleanup systems in the, in the years to come. So, um, so yeah, so uh, now starting up System 2 development and um, yeah, we we'll hope to launch that as soon as possible as well. That's fantastic, man. Well, I, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us and thank you for all the work you're doing to rid the world uh, of plastic in the ocean and in the rivers now, which is really cool. It is important to stress that the rivers, you know, of course, the fact that the rivers become a bit cleaner is a nice side effect. But uh, of course, the goal is, um, you know, we're the ocean cleanup, so the goal really is to prevent it from entering the oceans. Uh, so Nice. Anything else you want to say before you go? Um, no, I think we covered it. I mean, maybe you want to, you know, one thing that, that could be relevant is to say that, you know, um, you know, looking at the scale up for the rivers, we already have uh, signed contracts with several uh, governments right now, uh, which include uh, Thailand, Honduras, uh, as well as LA County. So, um, so for for the first systems that are going to be deployed next year. So, uh, so there should also be one on U.S. soil um, somewhere next year. Awesome. And your goal is 1,000 rivers by 2025. Is that correct? Yes, the, in the 1,000 heaviest polluting rivers around the world. That's fantastic. All right, well, thank you very much, Boyan. I really appreciate your time. All right, pleasure. Cheers.